Welcome, Patrick from Portrayal TV. Removing a distributor from an engine and then reinstalling it and getting the engine properly timed again is pretty intimidating the first time you do it. It doesn't have to be. This video is gonna show you exactly how to find top dead center on number one, get that distributor reinstalled and get your engine running again. Again. Got it. Now, it's better with his finger. There. Remember that top dead center for number one is top dead center for number one, no matter what going, it doesn't have anything to do with the distributor at that point. It's, it, it's completely irrelevant. And the way we do it is we put a finger on there and as the compression starts building up, this engine's turning over very slowly. It's a brand new engine, it's never been run. That's the first time we've tried to turn it over with the starter. It's turning over pretty good, all things considered. A little slow. But, but it's not bad, not bad. For, for, for how tight, you know, it's a tight, they're, they're always gonna be a little tight. So we found it, Matt's finger got blown off, which means that the piston is rising up, there's compression, and it blew it off. So we're close to top dead center. We're maybe a little bit before. We could be a little bit after because it wasn't precise, but it doesn't matter. There's plenty of room to find top dead center at this point. We know we're close. So at this point, I look at the distributor and the distributor, it doesn't matter where this is. So if I lift this thing back up, I can put the distributor in any direction I want to today, okay, right now. I can spin this around, I can put it like that. Okay, that means that this is number one, okay? Because we're at top dead center for number one. This needs to be firing spark plug number one. So when you put this on, that's gonna be number one. If I don't want it there just because I want it here, then I put it there. That's now number one. So I put the spark, I put the distributor cap back on and I would say, this one or this one is number one now, right? It doesn't matter. I, 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 can, I can do it any way I want to. I don't like it there. People say they look in the manual and they see that they have number one in the picture. They put number one here. There's no science there. They just did that. Somebody just, it, that's just the way the picture was taken. And then everybody says, oh, but it has to be right there. It doesn't have to be there. It can be any direction you want it to be but that's where we'll put it because people seem to think that that's where they want to see it. So this distributor cap only fits on one direction. It goes like this. It can only go on one way. Oh, okay. Because it has, and oh, this, it, it's got like a spline on it. Right. The World War II Jeep distributor is driven through a little tang by the oil pump itself as such. If you want to change this orientation when the engine is at TDC for number one, you're going to have to remove the oil pump and rotate it until you get it in the proper orientation. Don't forget that the tang is offset slightly to one side and will only go in one way. I set this particular Jeep engine up so that number one is right where my finger's pointing. So it's kind of like the rotor is aiming at number one. You see, I have plenty of adjustment to get the engine once I start it to adjust the distributor to get the timing just perfect. We set this up, this is number one. We're gonna put number one right here. Now, do we know which direction this thing turns? It turns that way. Twice. Okay, what's the firing order? Matt wrote it down. One, five, three, six, two, four. So this is number five cylinder. Yep. One, two, three, four, five goes in the second position. One, five, five, three, where's three? Right here, three, okay? Six. Six, please. Number six. Six. Two. Two is right there, it's a shorty. And the last one is number four. four. And so there we go. So now, I have this in. We've done everything else we're supposed to do. I'm gonna tighten this up just a little bit down here. So I want this snug enough that it doesn't vibrate 
and that it stays here, but that I can turn it to adjust. And we know this is, again, this is number one, and it was pointed about right there. So the engine ought to fire pretty quickly here. I want to be able to turn this because that's how I set the timing on the engine. So. Are you saying it needs to stay movable? And well, it needs to move. I'm going to actually, it needs to stay movable until I get it running because we didn't get the timing exactly perfect, but we got it close enough that it ought to fire. So what we're going to do now is we are going to take and you're going to step back and we're going to try to turn this thing over and see if we can. And we'll see if it, it you know, it might start right up. You never know. And Matt's in charge. You can put the choke on. So if you pull it down, that's the choke. <laughs> so you, you're going to pump that thing like a madman. Okay. With probably a little choke on like that. That's perfect. Okay. And then I'm going to keep twisting. Ready? I already turned it. If you found this video helpful, you might consider becoming a subscriber to Portrayal.tv. We have weekly episodes of Shot Time that are full of helpful tips like this one, as well as a growing catalog of how-to videos that will show you how to do anything from rebuilding a T84 correctly to retiming your Jeep distributor. We'll see you over there.